The new M4 Mac Minis are coming soon, and what should you expect? Welcome back to the channel. Now, if you're like me, you've been waiting for this M4 Mac Mini forever. It seems like forever, right? They skipped the M3 Mac Mini for some reason, and then the M2 Mac Mini came out way back, I think, in January of 2023, so it's been 18 months. So in this video, we're gonna find out, should it, you know, is it worth waiting for the new M4 Mac Minis to come out? Let's talk about it. Now, if you're waiting for the M4 Mac Mini, you probably fall into two different boats. Number one, you wanna get into the Mac ecosystem cheaply, and obviously at $5.99, the starting price, sometimes $4.99 on sale, it's a great system to get into, right? And then number two, you might have an M1 or an M2 Mac Mini, and you're waiting to see if this is gonna be a fast enough you know, upgrade to warrant the change here. Now, that's what I wanna say. So in this video, I'm gonna go through the features, what I think are the new features here, but also stay tuned, because at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you some really cool benchmarks on the M4 and the M4 Pro chip, which will go to the M4 Mac Mini. So sit back and relax, and let's figure out, is it really worth it? All right, the bad news first. It looks like Apple, for some reason, is gonna be skipping generations on all of their desktops moving forward. So the Mac Mini, the Mac Studio, and also let's the, the Mac Pro, right? Those are the desktop systems. They're gonna be skipping generations, just like they did on this Mac Mini. So it went from the M2, now it's going to the M4. So it might wait until the M6 after the M4. It's a possibility that the, the Mac Mini could get a redesign on the M5, and that would be the only reason they kind of put it in there. But otherwise, I think it's gonna be every two years for these desktop systems. So why would Apple actually do this? So skipping these generations on their desktop comes clear when you look at this graph over here. So this is actually from Consumer Intelligence Research Partners. Here's the graph. Here's all the Macs they sell. You can see MacBook Air and MacBook Pro, it makes up around 90% basically. And then all of their desktops, the iMac, the Mac Pro, the Mac Mini, the Mac Studio, that's only 10%. The iMac being the most at 4%. Think about this for a second, 4%. But the Mac Mini right here really makes up, I would say between one and 2%. It says 1%, Mac Studio is 1%. Let's just give it one to 2%. The Mac Mini makes up. So out of 100 units that Apple sells of Macs, one to two of them are Mac Minis. So that's the first clue right there. And then even more shocking, take a look at this over here. So here's Apple's revenue by product category, right? So Macs here are about $7 billion for the quarter, and the total revenue is about $85 billion. So Macs only make up like 8 or 9% of the total revenue that Apple makes, a very small percentage. Of that 8 or 9%, 1% or 2% of that is Mac Minis. So if you think about this, we break down the math. That means Apple, basically, their revenue comes from Mac Minis. It's, it's really like 1 500th to 1 1,000th of their revenue. So maybe up to 1 1,000th of Apple's revenues from Mac Minis. And here is the problem. Here is the problem with desktops and why they might start skipping generations. Obviously, with MacBooks, when you have 90%, people, there's a lot of turnover, and doing that every year makes sense. But for desktops, it makes literally no sense for them. They're making almost no money on it, and I think they just do it to keep people happy. I love the systems, but we gotta keep buying them so they keep making them. Let's talk design on the M4 Mac Minis. They're gonna stay exactly the same. We, like we said, we think the M5s might get a redesign, and the M4s are gonna stay the same. They're gonna look the same. The one option that they might do here is a space black version of it just to kind of mix things up. They did that with the Mac Pros, and Apple likes to match things. Plus, if you think about it, on all of their desktops, you don't really touch you don't touch the desktops that much like you do a laptop. So putting space black on there that is really a fingerprint magnet is, is perfect actually for a desktop, right? Do you agree? So I think they might actually make a space black version and it's not gonna sway me obviously, I don't care about that too much, but some people it might. All right, a couple other quick changes. I think that the M4 Mac Minis are gonna come with four Thunderbolt ports on all of their models. Now we saw this with the iPad Pros. The board's kind of changed on the M4 base chips or the M4 base boards, and they can get up to four Thunderbolt ports. So I think on the Macs, especially the Mac Mini, they'll actually come with four this time on the base level model for $599. That would be a huge change, right? It would be great to get two more of those. And then they might actually upgrade this to Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi 7 from Wi-Fi 6E. And that's not really gonna help to me or too many people because it's just already fast enough as it is. But I do think, I, mean, I don't even know if it had 6E in the last, on the M2 version, but it might go up to Wi-Fi 7 because Apple's now building their own chips so that could be a good you know good upgrade for some people but I mean at the end of the day it doesn't help me too much because I can barely use what I have on the older systems 
Now, I think the biggest change that might be coming is I think the, the kind of the base level M4 Mac minis might ship with 12 gigabytes of RAM instead of eight. Now, we talked about this. I'll put the video up here. You can go ahead and check that video out. I talked about this in the last video, and uh, we got into more details on why it is. But in a nutshell, the new iPad Air or the new iPad Pros, basically the M4 iPad Pros, they actually, on the eight, eight gigabit versions, they actually have two six gigabyte chips in there, and they bin them down. So it usually has 12 gigabytes of RAM, but they bin it down to eight for some reason. So we're thinking on the desktops, or at least all the Macs, including you know the MacBook Airs and, and the MacBook Pros, the base level models, they're going to come with 12 12 gigabytes of RAM. And I think Apple has to do this for a lot of reasons, but I do think that would be a great upgrade if it actually happens. Do you guys agree? Now, I would actually like 16, I think, in this day and age, but I'll take anything from Apple and 12 would be better than nothing. And then we think that the M4 Pro Mac Mini will actually start with 18 gigs of RAM instead of 16. And that'll actually go from 18, you know, 18 it'll start with, and then if you upgrade, it'll go to 36. Right now on the M2s, it was 16 and 32. So we think that change is coming also. But the real question after this is, is Apple actually gonna then charge you another 100 bucks for this change, especially on the base model, like maybe up to 699? Who knows? So why would Apple be forced to actually finally give us 12 gigabytes of RAM since we've been talking about it forever? Well, take a look over here. So here's on Amazon. This is the uh, Snapdragon. So this comes with the 15.6 inch 3K 120 OLED display. This is the Snapdragon Elite X or X Elite. And you can see here, 1169 right now, 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte SSD for 1169. You can see the ratings is only three, but it's only because a couple people didn't like their shipping or something. Long story short though, look at that cost there. So I think this is putting extreme pressure on Apple right to do something they have to give us more ram and maybe even some more ssd space now we'll get into that in a second even this next one even if you don't even look at snapdragon here's one from best buy this is the asus this is going to be look at this this is an intel 9 ultra you know obviously the intel core 9 24 gigs of ram it's got an rtx 3050 and a two terabyte ssd for 1200 bucks so look at this extreme pressure coming in i mean if you if you game this is a great system as well so i think apple finally sees this and they have to give us something so that's why i think for sure the RAM's coming. Who knows though? And then also maybe a 512 gigabyte SSD. I personally think it needs to be at least one terabyte on anything that's over a thousand bucks. But you know Apple, that's probably not going to happen this year. But 512 is a possibility. I mean, based off the assistance I just showed you, right, they have to do something. All right, let's talk about performance now. So on the M4 base model Mac minis, we think that it's gonna come with either nine cores, CPU cores, or actually 10 CPU cores. Now we hope on the iPads, they came with nine for the base. We hope that they're actually gonna give us 10 here in the Mac minis, because you know obviously Mac OS can use them. So if that's the case, you're gonna get four, I think it's four performance cores and six efficiency cores. So you actually get you know, obviously less performance and more efficiency cores there. If they only give you nine, you could get only three performance cores and six efficiency cores, which is kind of crazy there but we hope that they give us the 10 outright. Now the M4 Pro chips on the Mac minis, they should get 12 cores to start with, 12 basically CPU cores. That's gonna be six performance cores and six efficiency cores. So hopefully, obviously the Pro is gonna be the, well, we'll talk about it in a second. The Pro might be the sweet spot in this deal if you're doing any type of video editing and stuff like that, but you're gonna get 12 cores starting on the M4 Pro Mac minis. All right, let's talk about the base level M4 Mac Mini. So let's talk about Geekbench 6 single score, single core scores right here. So skip the first one for a second. Here's the M1. This is going to be the Mac Mini M1. Single core is 2356. Then the M2 Mac Mini here would be 2601. So that's a pretty, you know, pretty good jump there. Now, they didn't come out, obviously, with an M3 Mac Mini. But if they did, it would be around 3091. You can see the progressive here of 300 each. But look at this big jump here of 700. So the Apple M4 10 core, this is going to be the new M4. Mac Mini, the base level, 3,730. So look at the difference between basically the M1 here all the way here. It's almost double. And even the M2, it's a huge jump. And even the M3, it's a big jump. And I put this up here, the Elite right here, the 12 core, just to show you, this is kind of their Elite from Snapdragon. It's only 2813, but look at this base level, 3730 for the Apple M4 10 core. It's going to be a huge jump. And this is single core. So this means like browsing the web, just, you know, how responsive your computer is. It's going to seem super responsive. Now, the reason I didn't put the Pro in here, the Apple M4 Pro, is because it's going to be very similar on single core. It's going to be around 37 or 3,800. So it's still going to be really good there. All right, so multi-core scores on Geekbench 6 now. This is more important, and we'll talk about the Pro version as well. So take a look over here. You can see the chart. So let's skip the first one like we always do. So the M1 multi-core scores, 8,302. The M2 version was 9,725, so pretty good, you know, pretty good jump there. The M3, they didn't come out with the Mac Mini, but that went up to 11,715. You can see that nice jump of over, you know, around 2,000. 
So here's the M4 down here, 14,591. This is going to be the base level, you know, Mac Mini right here, the M4. So you can see that it's basically matching the Elite 12 core up here. This is 12 cores. This is only 10 cores, but it's basically matching that. But here's the Apple M4 Pro 12 core, 12 cores. So 12 core versus 12 core, all the way up to 18,211. See that? So almost, what is it, you know, three and a half thousand higher than the Elite over here and way higher than the last model of the, you know, the, well, way higher than just the base. And look at the difference here between this and this. So obviously, if you're going to be doing video editing with multi-core and things like that, this is actually a big number there. So the M4 Pro, you know, Mac Mini is going to be a great system for that kind of stuff. And this kind of proves that where you're going to get a huge jump from your M1 or your M2 Pro, if you, if you guys have one of those things, it's still a pretty good, you know, you're going to see a lot of performance gains no matter what. All right, so for the GPUs now, let's talk GPUs. So on the base level Mac Mini M4, we're gonna get, I think, what does it say, 10 GPU cores here, and then the M4 Pro, we're thinking it could come with 19 or 20, but we're actually gonna go out on a limb and say, we think that there's gonna be 20 GPU cores, all right? So 20 would be a big number. But let me go ahead and pull up my chart here, and I'm gonna show you exactly what that means. All right, so here's Geekbench 6 metal scores. Here's the M1 right here. So this is 31,998. The M2 had 43,998. The M3 version had 47,500. You can see the nice progression here. The M4 base level, which is going to be the base level Mac Mini, will have 53,283. But look at this. Two, this is going to be the Apple M4 Pro 20 core right here. We're estimating, this is an estimate, 102,222. You can see the massive difference here. Now, obviously, if I put the M M3 Pro in here, I think the M3 Pro chip is actually around 80,000. So it's going to go from 80,000 roughly in the M3 Pro to 102,000 right here. But you can see just by getting the difference between the M4 standard and the M4 Pro and the graphics, it's basically double, right? I mean, it's going to have double the, the GPU cores. So look at that. So again, if you're doing any type of gaming even, if you want to try to get into it, the Pro version is where you want to be but look at the difference there obviously like i said the the m3 pro chip i think is around eighty thousand, so it's not as big of a difference but i mean this is pretty crazy right so you have to really think of what you're going to buy here and we think obviously there's a big difference in cost too so it's going to really come down to you know money and needs Okay, so you saw Snapdragon in there. Like the reason I had that in there is because any type of competition for Apple is good for us, all right? So what happens if, if they keep making better chips and they're gonna come up with a chip in the next couple months, maybe six months from now, maybe four months from now, Snapdragon will have another one. It's gonna keep Apple on its toes. And when Apple's on its toes, it's dangerous and it, it, we win in it, right? We might get 12, hopefully 16 gigs. We might get a bigger SSD drive, and they probably would never have done that if it wasn't for Snapdragon coming out and putting some competition on them. So always think of it as a good thing. And I hate people that, like, everyone says, oh, this is better than this, this is better than that. Who cares, right? As long as they all keep getting better because there's pressure on them, I think we all win. Okay, so finally, the time frame on this, we think it's going to be October or November of this year. So there's going to be a couple of events coming up then. And, you know, Apple, they never really want to get, they never want to ship the Mac minis with the Pro chip before they do the MacBook Pros with the Pro chip. So we think it might come out in the same event. Now, we also think that the iMac, if there's ever a new iMac, for some reason, they're talking about an M4 iMac. Maybe I'm hoping it's 27 or 32, but I'm not holding my breath there. But anyways, that'll come out later because they don't want to, you know, have the Mac minis come out with the iMacs because they kind of compete against each other. But overall, I think that'll come out later, and I'm hoping for a great iMac, right? But I think November, October, no, November is the right time frame here for the new Mac Minis. And uh, that's really all I have in this video. So you guys tell me what you think here. Was this useful information? Are you excited about this? Will you be upgrading if you have an M1 or an M2 Mac Mini? Are you going to go with the Pro version or the normal version? Do you think there's a price increase? Do you think we're going to get 12 gigs of RAM also? So I'll wrap it up now. Post in the comments if you can. Help me. Subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you the next one. Peace.